Hey everyone, this is Ron with Bridgecom Systems, and I am here live in Smithville, Missouri, uh, coming to you from Bridgecom HQ, and I have a great, uh, another great uh, live stream on tap for you today. <clears throat> Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending your morning with us. Uh, we do appreciate it. We're glad you're here. We're glad you want to learn, and we definitely want to give back to you guys for that. We thank you for the business as well. Uh, before I get going, I do want to make a, an announcement. Uh, big time uh, congratulations to Stephen Carey. He won the uh, Share Your Shack giveaway. Uh, Stephen Carey's K K04 SPC. So congratulations. He won a whole pile of stuff. It's pretty cool. But uh, uh, in keeping with the uh, ham ham fest uh, spirit, we're giving doing another giveaway called the Grand Ham Giveaway. I know baseball season just started, and uh, so we spun off that Grand Ham Giveaway. Uh, a lot of same, almost the same stuff. Uh, five seven eight UV three Pro, eight seven uh, eight seven eight UV Plus, uh, Skybridge dual band hotspot, plug and play programming for both. USA and International hotspot code plug and plug installed, tri band antenna, microphone. Uh, Tanner will put the link up. You guys can enter that. That's awesome. Um, anyway, about $1,600 worth of stuff there. We're doing another giveaway, so sign up. And also, uh, our Facebook group page is just about to 10,000. So if you haven't signed up for our official group page, we invite you to do that. And also, uh, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We put out a lot of content there almost daily, and we definitely uh, want you to join in on that. Hit the notification bell when you sign up. That way you're alerted when we put something else new. So do that. All right, well, good. Let's get in. I've got, uh, I've got some show notes here. This is a lengthy one we're going to do today because I, I've been scouring through the Facebook group page, uh, and I see that you know, we're getting a lot of new people coming into the group. A lot of people are buying the radios. A lot of people are getting hotspots, and we're you know, seeing you know, just the ongoing challenges of setting all this up for the new folks. And I thought it'd be good to revisit everything. And also, at the same time, just uh, we got a new radio out, the 878UV2, and you'll note that's new because it's got the green button. The uh, 868 had the orange button. The 878 had the blue button on top, I'm referencing that. And the 878UV2 has a green button. And what makes this radio different is that it supports APRS receive and transmit, and it also has 500,000 contact list. Um, as memory, or as these contacts, the contact list has grown, the radios have had to grow with them to support the, the uh, folks coming into the family here. So as uh, more and more people get into DMR, the contact list grows, and of course the radios at the time were good enough, but now that it's growing, it's probably, they're not going to be good enough. So the, the folks at Anytone went and uh, made that change to this newer release. So 878UV2, and we're going to use that today and put the uh, CPS on this computer here. I've not done that yet, but we're going to go, we're going to do a start from finish. We're going to program our radio up from scratch. We're going to set up our hotspot from scratch and we're going to, the goal is, is to hit the parrot and make a contact. Okay, that's my goal for today. And at the same time, I want to show you this whole process because, uh, as I stated, I've, I've been watching the comments in the Facebook group page. You guys are doing a fantastic job, you know, all you guys contributing and helping out. But there's still folks coming into the family and they're, and they're struggling and we wanted to create some more contact, or content for you guys to, uh, to, to explore to, to do this. And plus, we're getting better at it as well. I know the more and more I do this, I find new things to... Uh, to, to check out and you know I get better at it as well so I'm gonna dump jump into the deep end of the pool here with you and start here with the um, the notes here um, one of the things that I've seen uh, that I want to encourage you guys as you're doing this uh, a lot of you guys are coming in from HF a lot of you guys are coming in from using uh, basically dedicated ham radios from the makers of like Yesu, Icom, Alenco and you're seeing these DMR radios and you're like, man, these things don't even, they don't even act the same. They're just messed up. You know, they don't even, they're, they're commercial radios that have come into the amateur radio community and we're all, all of our brains are scrambled. And I, I've seen this, you know, several times where people just, oh, you know, I, 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 I just can't get it. So what I want to encourage you is you got to have a great attitude when you get into this and you have to have a growth mindset. And I put this as the number one uh, point here that I want to talk about is, you know, you got to have some confidence, okay? I mean, you can do this. You've got, a, you've got your ham radio license. 
uh, you're, you're set up to learn this stuff. This is just a new frontier. So, you know, don't despair, don't give up. Uh, we're here for you. We created a big company, uh, six tech support folks on staff. I got customer service people. We're here to help you. We've got this Facebook group page, these videos. So, you know, I see comments like, oh, I'm just going to throw it in the trash. You know, don't do that. Uh, have a great attitude. Uh, we'll get you through this. And that's what this video is about as well. So, uh, yeah, number one, uh, great attitude. I haven't put this up here before, but it's, you got to have a great attitude. Let's see if I can spell this morning. Great attitude. And that, it, it's, it's, it's what you need in life. You know, you can't get nowhere without a great attitude. So uh, come to the table with that. The next step is you need a ham radio license. Now, hopefully you guys are all there. You got your radio license. If you haven't, go get one. They're not that hard. Technician license. You got uh, 35 questions, I think. Uh, just get, get set up with a local. You got to have a license. That's the first step in, in the, uh, I always spell that wrong. Um, and the next step is you got to go to radioid.net after you get your ham radio license and you go get a DMR ID. You need a DMR ID. The ball starts rolling when you get the DMR ID. All right, the next step is uh, you gotta get a good radio. And we sell quite a few of them here at Bridgecom, the 868, 878, and the 878 UV2 along with the mobile, the 578. That's a must, and then you need to get a good hotspot or find a repeater. Now a hotspot is one of the most fascinating things that have come around. We've got one right here on the bench we're going to work on. But that thing will uh, that'll free you up. It'll make the whole world at your fingertips. Opens up the whole world. You can take that thing with you. I've done some videos in the past where I show you how you can hook a battery to it, connect it to your cell phone through the Wi-Fi connection that it supports. Uh, it really opens up the whole world. Uh, so I, uh, you need a hotspot. Get a hotspot or be in proximity to a local repeater. Okay. Now today we're going to focus on setting up a hotspot because there's a lot of you guys getting hotspots from all over the place. Some of you guys have bought the SkyBridge and that's one I'm going to work on today. But a uh, hotspot is necessary or a local repeater. It, uh, and the hotspot and the local repeater talking to them is about the same. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so go and apply for your DMR ID. Okay, the next step is because we're, we're going to connect the, uh, we're going to start off talking about connecting the hotspot. Okay, that's the first step in this process. I'm going to get the hotspot, a brand new hotspot, uh, totally uh, ready to go as far as it just, it has what's called Pi Star installed on it. Okay, but it's not been set up. So uh, Pi Star seems to be the uh, de facto uh, place for setting up hotspots as far as the uh, initializing and setting up your uh, ability to use these devices. Most of them are supporting uh, Pi Star. And that's what we're going to work on today. So that's where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to set up an account on a, a platform called Brandmeister. Okay. Brandmeister is a very large network of hotspots and repeaters that has been put together by the amateur radio community. There, it's a, a worldwide network. Now, there are other networks out there. There's one called TGIF, uh, DMR Plus. I'm not going to get into those today, but in principle, they're all the same. They're just another, uh, another railroad, if you will. Like you've got the Union Pacific, you've got the BNSF, and then uh, Missouri Southern, or no, uh, I, I don't remember all the railroads. But anyway, it's like another railroad. So Brandmeister is a big railroad, okay, and you want to go to this link here after you've got your DMR ID, and again, go through that radioid.net and get your DMR ID. I put a link in the show notes that you can go check that out, and Glenn, great guy, he's up in Canada, uh, he runs that site, and he's pretty quick about getting DMR IDs out, but uh, if he doesn't get one out right away, just be patient. Um, the process is pretty straightforward, but he does... Um, uh, require you to have a, a valid amateur radio call sign and he'll ask you to support those support your credentials with some sort of uh, um, piece of paper of uh, a license verification okay so 
I clicked on this Brandmeister page. This is the um, uh, place you want to go to get started on Brandmeister. Okay, so where you, you're going to want to do, you want to you want to log in. Okay, now or set up a password. So you want to register if you're not already there. Now I've already done this. My amateur call sign is KC0QVT, and I've already set this all up. But you need to do this as well okay so I'm gonna go ahead and log in all right now you'll see here looks like you know I've got a repeater that I also manage here a repeater ID but what you want to do is go down here and look at this thing called uh, you got your hotspots and your repeater what you want to do is go over here to where after you've got logged in you want to click on this thing called self-care <clears throat> all right now This is really important. You need to have a hotspot password before it won't before it will, will work. Okay, uh, a lot of you guys are like, oh, I connected it all up and it doesn't. You know, I can't. They won't talk back to me, and it's because you don't have a, you didn't you never set up the password is a common issue. Okay, so uh, make sure you set up hotspot security. Turn that on and set you up a password because we're going to use that later. All right. Now I've already done that, but I'm going. I'm reviewing this because this is extremely important. A lot of guys get snagged up right here. Okay, you need a hotspot password to work on Brandmeister, and I know a lot of the other uh, uh, networks are uh, requiring that as well. I do believe now TGIF has gone to that approach as well. It used to be you didn't need a password, but now you're starting to need a password. So get your password done, and I'm showing you right here on this screen. This is where you do that. It's in the self-care settings on your Brandmeister login page. All right, now I'm going to leave this window open and reference this because we're going to see we're going to use this to verify that I once I get the hotspot set up that we are actually connected to it. Okay. So the next step is, okay, so you got this hotspot and in this case of this demonstration, we're going to use the SkyBridge. This is a hotspot that we offer. Uh, it's it's it sits on the Raspberry Pi 3B platform. And um, if we could just show the uh, what we're looking at here, um, it's sitting here and basically a it has no it has no uh, intelligence at this point. It's sitting there thinking it's initialized. So you know, referencing the um, notes here, we've plugged it in, and now we need to find the IP address of this hotspot. Now you do that by going into your uh, home network router. Or your Wi-Fi router, which I've connected this to. Okay, so I'm here on my computer, and we have Spectrum in the office here. And I and I'm going to log in. I'm going to log into this uh, router, and I'm going to show you in this case what I'm going to do to find my IP address. Now, I've there's a lot of activity going on here in the shop. So I go to this advanced page. Your your router might be totally different. It could be, you know, uh, uh, whoever. I mean, I don't even know what the manufacturer of this router is, but you'll see here we got people on Wi-Fi, and then we got some Ethernet connections. Okay. Now you're going to see over here on the right. I'm physically connected to this thing, and so I'm going to take a stab and say, well, that's running Pi Star. So my IP address is uh, 192.168.1.59. So I'm going to take a stab, open up a new tab here, and I'm going to type in 192. Well, I've already done this before, so I'm going to just click over here and type in 59. Okay, and let's just see. That should pop up. Okay, I'm pretty confident that's my um, my hotspot, and this is the what's on there. Uh, the hotspot came to me with PyStar already preloaded on it. So, okay, it, it said no mode defined and then it, it vectored over here. So, uh, let's go ahead and start on that. You may have to type in uh, hot, uh, Raspberry, I'm sorry, your, your password and username, username and password, it's gonna be pi-star is your username and the password is always Raspberry. So, uh, it could change, you could change that later, but by default, pi dash star, all lowercase, and then raspberry is the password. Okay, so following along here, um, we found the URL, okay, no modes defined. All right, so the next, uh, we want to look here and we're going to see this configuration page, okay, and you'll see some uh, gateway hardware information. 
Uh, the gentleman that made this program, uh, he, he, he's an awesome dude. I've never met him, but it's really cool what he's done, uh, giving back to the, to the hams. And uh, he's pr created this program here that creates an I, a file that then is then dumped into the Raspberry Pi so that when it boots up, it knows exactly what to do based on what you told it. So what we're gonna do is we see that we're on an MMDVM host in simplex mode. Now, all we wanna do at this point is simply click apply changes, okay? And this gets the ball rolling so that I can turn this into a DMR hotspot, okay? So it goes through a reset sequence here. And then on option number three on head, setting this hotspot, it says once, okay, warning the modem's not been select, selected. Okay, it's gonna create this page called MMDVM host configuration. We wanna move this slider bar over to DMR. And then we wanna make sure we change the display settings. And I actually, I put in the show notes a screen capture of this. So we're going to change this to the next Eon display because we have a displayed device. And then we're going to go with the modem. And I don't know what any of this means, to be honest. The next Eon layout, we're going to go with ON7LDSL3. <clears throat> don't ask me what that means. <clears throat> Beyond my pay grade at this point. So I'm going to apply these settings as well. <clears throat> and this is going to... <clears throat> Excuse me. This should restart the uh, the uh, Pi Star again, okay? And it's going to bring up some additional information on the general configuration page, so we can get this set up. And we should see our. Uh, hotspot change if I'm working on the right one okay and I'm gonna change my and then we want to go down here to um, on the general configuration page this is where we start entering in all our credentials so your node call sign is going to be your call sign okay so let's just go ahead and type all this in kc0qvt is my password or my my uh call sign my dmr id it's already been put in so it's this 3129172 now you can go get that from uh radioid.net so i've already done that before okay so we're going to operate this uh, uh, hotspot on 446.525 and I've entered this in before so it's popping up okay and now this is where you enter your uh, location data now I don't have this committed to memory but what I what I do is I generally I type in Smithville comma Missouri L O N G L A T now you can do that for wherever you're located and it's going to pull up in Google search it's going to pull up your uh, location and then you just simply type in your latitude whoops I, I uh, copied and paste so I'm going to paste that there go over here and get my other coordinate okay and you want to leave that minus sign at least if you're in the United States and we'll put that in my town is Smithville Missouri already been entered before and I'm in the United States so I'm going to type in USA and this is all just some housekeeping stuff this house this is how you uh, you're seeing on the uh, Brandmeister network because they pull in this information all right so I'm going to type in let's see I'm going to type in Bridgecom systems right there okay now the next very important thing is you need to select your modem type and again I put the uh, screenshot of this eventually from what I'm going to have here is this is a zoom spot dual band raspberry high raspberry pi hat that is the modem type that goes in there okay then the system time zone we're, we're in the Chicago time zone we're in the Midwest so we're central time uh, for the US and then of course uh, my uh, we speak English UK uh, US I'm gonna say UK well, where'd it go ah oh, there it is so that's that and then click apply changes
and it should restart. All right, cool. Now, if you come over here to the uh, hotspot, you're going to see all that stuff that I just put in there is, is populated on the display now. Okay. You got the sky bridge. You see the uh, Ethernet port is 192.168.1.59. Some other stuff. Like you, there's your there's your time time stamp. For, um, oh no, that's right. It's it's putting it in there the way the, the folks in Europe look at stuff. And then you've got uh, there's the receive and transmit frequency, my call sign, my DMR ID, and it says I'm idle. Okay, so this is really cool. We're we're getting there. Okay, so right now it's set up, but it's not connected to a network yet and that's what we're going to do. So the next step is following along here in the, in the, sh in the show notes is we're going to connect it to the Brandmeister network. So uh, we're going to be on option five or number five it says you'll then connect the hotspot to the Brandmeister network. This is done in the DMR configuration section. Okay. If you go down here it says DMR master. You want to select your DMR master, your Brandmeister DMR master server. Okay, now uh, this is going to be unique to where you're located. Okay, in the United States, for example, we have three servers that we have available to us, and they go by a number. This, and you'll see in this drop down menu all these different servers. Okay, like for example, Brandmeister 3101, 3102, 3103, 3104. Okay, uh, 3101 is generally the East Coast. 3102 is the Midwest and 3103 is the West Coast. Now you'll see here a 3104 and I put a big uh, alert here. This came out uh, not too long ago and you want to pay attention to this. If you were on the East Coast and you're using 3101 that is apparently going bye bye and you need to change your, well, I already see a typo here. I put 3014. You need to change that to 3104. So 3101 is going away. So you need to change the 3104. And that's what uh, this is all starting to make make its way into the uh, uh, out on the on the web. But yeah, 3101 is going away. So make and if you guys are on that one and all of a sudden things don't work, well, it's because the server went bye bye. So you want to change the 3104. Now since we're in the Midwest, we're going to go with 3102. So I'm going to select that. That's very important. And at this point, we want to apply the changes because that's going to uh, clean all this DMR configuration page up and give us the ability to enter our hotspot password. But let's say you're in uh, Europe and you have a, uh, you're in Denmark or you're in France. They all have their own Brandmeister servers, okay? And that's what they would request you to use. So they've set up a ton of servers. Very well organized group of folks. So I applied the changes here, setting it up at Brandmeister 3102. And that is going to connect my hotspot to this network. And I applied the changes. You want to leave color code at one. Actually, I, I take that back. You can set color code to whatever you want. We're going to use one. Okay, so I'm going to apply the changes. Now, this should be the magic button that connects my hotspot to Brandmeister. If everything goes right, I should see a green board. So we're going to restart this. And we'll verify this here in a moment once it restarts. And I'll show you where to do that. Okay, so we're back to good. All right. Okay, so to verify this, you go over to, you know, this is uh, number six. Uh, click on the dashboard link, which is over here. Okay. If all is well, you should see green for DMR mode, which I do. And the DMR master will be BM3102, which you see on the bottom. 
and you can also see uh, network status is, D, is DMR net. So I think we're good. And it also shows that time slot two is what's enabled. That's extremely important because when we go to set up our radio, you're going to want to know that. But you can see my DMR ID is there, 3129172. My DMR color code's one. My time slot's two. And I've got green boards. So I should be connected to Brandmeister. Now, uh, let's go find out. It should, if I go over here to the, the, the page again, I can click down here on my hotspots. I should have, well, let me go ahead and refresh this page because I don't know if it, it's got a red mark there. It may not have updated live yet. Let's just make sure. See, there it's green. You see that where it's got like a, what looks like an outlet. You plug in the wall, it says I'm green. So I am connected to Brandmeister. So those are the things that you need to look for. Okay, you want green boards, and if you don't, if you don't get those, you you might you need to make sure you've got your hotspot password connected. You got to make sure all that stuff is set up, and if you don't, that's where you can start running into problems. Other problems I've seen is where it looks like it connects and then it drops off. Connects, drops off. Um, I would inspect your network connections. Uh, your something's going on in your 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 uh, house network or something like that. This thing should stay, uh, if you've got a good rock solid uh, internet connection at your house, you should stay connected all the time. Uh, these servers are very, they seem to be very reliable. Uh, it's, there's either, a, uh, you've got a, an issue going on here. If you're on Wi-Fi, that can, they can tend to dri uh, drift in and out depending on your proximity to the, to the Wi-Fi connection. In this case, we're on a physical connection and it should stay up. It should stay up forever. I mean, there's really nothing that should break this connection. So we're, we're, we're done here with the, uh, the Brandmeister page. We're connected to the network because I've got a green board there. I'm over here on DMR dashboard. I'm sorry, not D, the PyStar dashboard. And I can see I'm on DMR, DMR net, and I'm all enabled. Now, and I've got a, uh, a, 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 a which you should see on your page right there. And also, uh, this, uh, when I cut this, there was actually a call taking place. So um, that's why you'll see that T TRX is red there. Okay, so we're done with that. Now, um, let's start setting up the radio. Got the brand new radio here, the 878UV2. I believe my hotspot's ready to go. I'm good to go. Okay, so got the new UV2, green button on top. We want to go and open up a new window, or I can just actually go to this one, and I can, I'm going to go to uh, bridgecomsystems.com because I'm going to fetch the CPS to program this radio. Uh, what is this? Ah, hang on. There it is down here. Okay. All right, okay, so we're on this page and we wanna to go to support. And this is where you're gonna see all of our support documentation for everything we do here. And we're doing a real, you know, we're trying to, you know, if this is where you guys can enter support tickets, and this is something I would highly encourage you to do if you're having issues, you bought your radio from us and you can't get, you know, the best way to get a hold of us is through a support ticket. I wanna encourage you to do that. This is the place to do that, okay? Support ticket right there. You can create a new one by pressing new, new support ticket. So we're gonna go down here to product support and we can see here Anytone 878UV2 Plus handheld support. So there it is, Anytone Plus firmware, UV2 Plus firmware and driver. Okay, and it brings up this, this other page and this is where we wanna download the latest software. So this is the UV2 plus CPS. I'm, gonna, I'm downloading it right there. All right, now let me take a, let me take a moment and uh, talk to you about this, this tablet computer. This, I got this tablet computer oh, six, seven months ago on Amazon for $100, okay? It runs Windows 10, it's got a USB port. We put a link out on these earlier videos we did and you can't get this anymore. However, uh, uh, big time props to uh, a guy named John Bowman, November 4, 
Juliet Mike Bravo, <clears throat> he says, hey, you know, there's a, will this work? <clears throat> and uh, he gave me a link, <clears throat> excuse me, he gave me a link to a, another tablet computer that's on Amazon that looks like it works really, it's going to work really well. It's got all the same credentials. It's got Windows 10. It's got a USB port. And I think right now it's on there for $139.99. And so if you guys are looking for a very simple computer, I, I got a link there where you can check that out. I've not tried that computer, but my guess is that's going to work because it does run Windows 10. And it's all Wi-Fi out. It looks almost just like this one. Uh, this is, it comes up, says RCA. I think this is a Cambio, but this one here, check that link out in the show notes for a computer, and we'll put it in the drop down uh, in the show notes of the uh, YouTube video that's going to come out of this. Okay, so I've downloaded this program, and now we want to install it on this machine. Okay, and I'm going to show it in the folder just so I can see where it's located. <coughs> All right. I need some water. Okay. <clears throat> oh, that's not good. I better plug this thing in. All right. <clears throat> All right. So this is the uh, the CPS. We want to uh, left double click on this, <clears throat> and it's gonna. We want to extract this, okay, and get this installed on our machine, and it's going to ask me where to extract it. I am going to put it right there, um, and it's going to show it. So I'm extracting these files that are all zipped up in that file that I downloaded right off our website. And now it's going to show me the directory where it's located, which is cool, so I don't have to go hunting for it. And then I want to look... This 878 UV2 2.0 CPS. I want to go in here and now I'm going to left double click on this. Well, actually, I want to right click on it and I want to run this in administrator mode. Now, that's just, I think it makes Windows happy. Click, uh, Windows obviously thinks this is an issue. Just hit more info and we're going to run this anyway. Okay. I've never had this program on my machine, so this is all new. So, um, hoping all this works just fine. So we're going to go ahead and, um, well, I hope that I got this plugged in. Should be plugged in. Okay. Okay, so we're going to install, it wants to default to the, the D drive. We're going to put it on the C drive, okay? I'm going to put it on C. Got to change that. And I'm going to create a desktop icon, and I'm going to install this, okay? And this goes pretty quick. And I'm going to go ahead and have the, I'm going to have it launch, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. So this is what you can expect. You just got your radio, you got to go out and get the software so that you can start talking to it. We just did all that, okay? So that's very important. That's how we can, we're going to set up this uh, radio to talk to the SkyBridge here. Okay, it looks like it's down here. Okay. All right. So. This is, and you'll notice by up on the top, it's going to tell you the model, UV2, and then, of course, version 2.00. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get the radio, and I want to read it from the newly installed CPS, but let me go over here real quick. I'm going to turn it on. Got a new radio out of the box. Booting, please wait. And it comes up with this calibrate date. Just go ahead and hit, hit confirm. You can change all this stuff later, okay? So it's going to go through this um, startup sequence and just display a default profile that's in the radio and then it should go dark here after the timeout timer and we're going to change that so you guys can see that so there it goes dark so now i'm going to come over here to the computer with my programming cable that i plugged in okay and i'm going to um, read i gotta make sure that's fastened really well okay so now i am going to hopefully not lose my mouse. Let's see. Okay, I think this is kind of, looks like I lost my mouse. Let me try to let me plug that in. There it goes. Okay, I think this is COM3. I'm going to try that. And now I'm going to read this. And it should work, I hope. 
I want just the other data. All right, it's working. Ah, I love it when it works. Okay, this is what's in the radio by default. And what we're going to do here is we're going to delete all these channels because we don't want them anyway. So I'm going to go down here. I'm just going to use my keyboard and go there. All right. So we, we read the radio using the newly installed CPS. Okay, so now we connected the cable. We selected the COM port from the list. Now we're going to add our DMR ID. We're going to add the DMR ID to your... To this radio ID list. Very important. Okay, this is where you want the radio to know it's you. Okay, and I am 312, and I never can remember this, so I'm going to go over here and just go to my configuration. Now, oh, there I am, 312-9172. 312-9172. You got to have that in here, or the radio, or the, the system won't know who you are. So I'm just, and this is an alpha tag. So I'm going to put in Ron KC0QVT. Got to do that. Okay. All right. That's, that's the first step here. So add your DMR to the radio ID list. Now, now we're going to create three contacts from scratch. We're going to, we, well, these are contacts that are already existing, and we're going to add them to the, the CPS here. So basically, we're rolling our own CPS right out the gate. I want to show you guys this, uh, you know, as a basic... Uh, you know, start uh, process. I got to get my mind right here. I, you guys can download your own code plugs at times. I'm showing you how they're made. Okay. I want to show you how they're made because when you know how they're made, you can understand how to fix something. If something goes wrong, you'll see uh, over time, you know, how oh, that doesn't look right. Or you'll have a bug. And if you import a code plug, somebody else gave you, well, you'll understand what, how they're done. So I'm going to create one from scratch for that purpose. So what we want to do is we want to create these contacts for, I'm going to, I'm going to hit the parrot, which is the, you've probably heard this, where you key into the, to the Brandmeister server and speak and it, it comes back to you and then you know you hit the uh, system. It's a good way to test everything. Then you need to have a talk group disconnect, otherwise your radio is going to stay connected to a talk group forever if you don't disconnect from it. And then just for the sake of testing, I, I put the Utah statewide talk group in here. We're going to try to see if somebody's in, in Utah that wants to have a QSO. So we want to go over here to this digital contact list, and we're going to see that there's, well, that's, that's, I'm sorry, that's a, uh, that's a whole nother uh, situation there. We're not even going to fool with the digital contact list. That's basically everybody that's got a DMR ID, and I'm not going to put anybody in there for now. Because I'm, you definitely at some point look at a video like how to import a contact list. So we're going to add some talk groups. So the first talk group we're going to add is the talk group disconnect. Okay. So the name here is going to be disconnect. If I can type, that's a group call, and it's talk group four thousand. Okay. Now, I put a link in the show notes that has a, uh, a link for all the Brandmeister talk groups that are available, okay? But I'm only putting in three of them for now. And there's somebody out there that's got a list that you can import into your radio and uh, you get them all in there. But I'm going to make them from scratch. So now we're going to add the parrot. So I'm going to call it the parrot. And this is a private call, okay? You want to make sure this is a private call. And that's going to be 9990, okay? That's the talk group number from that list. And then we're going to go with Utah. A lot of folks out in Utah, they're doing some really cool stuff with DMR. And we were just out there on vacation. So there's 3149. We went out there to ski. Okay. So those are the three talk groups that I want in here for now. Okay. Now you can add more or go get one from someplace else, okay? But in the interest of showing you start to finish, I'm creating three of them. So the next step is, is I want to create three channels, one for each talk group, okay? So I'm going to go up here where it says public and I'm going to create these channels, okay? Now this is where we start thinking about the sky bridge. So the first channel I'm going to add is the parrot. And I'm going to alpha tag it as parrot, okay? Now remember, we, we set the channel up to 446 dot 525 we've got 
transmit 446.525 because we know it's a simplex frequency. The DMR mode is simplex, okay? The channel type is digital. The transmit power, I'm going to set to low because I'm right in front of this thing. TX permit is always, uh, that's something that you can adjust, okay? And now the contact is where you're going to put the parrot, okay? And see when you left click on it, it'll actually say it's a private call and tell you the number. So I'm going to left click on that. My color code is one, but now here's the key to time slots two. You remember from the other screen, uh, that's the one that's enabled. And that's really all you have to do here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to paste it twice. Paste it there, and I'm going to paste it there. So now all I have to do is just change the contacts. So now I want my, my uh, disconnect. Everything should be the same. And then I want, my, I want to go, uh, I just see I made it. I got Utah. I want to put Utah in there. I just realized something. I need to change this, change this to Utah and go back to that other um, alpha tag. Call this disconnect. Because that'll, that'll be how it shows up on the... Ah. Okay. Three channels. All right, now, now that you got the channels connected, or channels are created, and you named them, you got the groups assigned to them, time slot uh, of two, the color code is one, now what do you do? The next step is you got to create a zone, a must. You have to create a zone, okay? Without a zone, these channels will not show up in your radio, or you won't be able to use them. So let's create a zone. You just left double click on that. We're going to just call this the hotspot zone. H-S-Z-O-N-E. And now we're going to put these three channels in the zone. All of them right there. And that's all you have to do. All right, now, prior to writing the radio, I want to show you a page here that is going to make your radio a little more friendly at first. And I click on this optional settings tab. Okay, Th this brings up all the kind of ways to uh, make the radio how you want to do it. Now, in the interest of just showing you some things and uh, uh, get you started, and also uh, some things I like to do real quick, is I'm going to make some changes here. And I, I pointed them out. Um, I want to hit this display tab here. Where is it? And I do not like the fact that that backlight goes off. Okay? I want that duration to be always. I want it always on. Okay? Okay, and then we can set some colors. I'm going to change my colors. I like green. The channel names are going to be green. I'll change them. Makes, them, makes it look prettier. Okay. And some of this stuff, you can play around with all this. Okay, then you got this power on section. This is where you can add your name, various things like that. Uh, mess around with that. Then you've got this work mode. And <clears throat> Okay, yeah, we got... We want the display mode here to be channel. That way I can see the alpha tags after I've, I turn it on because otherwise you're, it's just going to display, display the frequency. And, you know, that doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Okay, you want to have the alpha tag associated with that. And then also you want this to be uh, amateur mode. If you'll notice the working mode at the bottom is amateur. That's, that's key there. One other item is uh, go to the alert tone. This is really something I like having is I want the uh, talk permit here. I want this to be digital and analog. That's going to set out this call tone sequence of tones. And, I, and I'm keeping it simple right now. It's just going to emit a add 800. That's a little, I'm going to make it like 900. I want to hire, let's make it 1,000. No, let's make it 1,200. That's a nice, uh, pleasant tone to hear when you connect to your uh, system. And, and it's a good way to um, just know that you've got access to the channel, okay? So I'm ready to write this. Okay, so it says write to the radio and test the parrot, disconnect in the Utah statewide. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and try this. We're going to write to the radio. And we're going to... I'm going to... Okay. Now, I'm going to bring this over here so you guys can see this. It's copying the data to the radio. 
booting. Please wait. And it should populate with these channels I just added because it should default to that first zone. Okay. Turn it up a little bit here. Okay. So you can see up at the top, color code is one, low power, that's that L next to the what looks like the antenna. It's on the parrot as the first channel. I, you can see that my display is doing an A and B channel. Okay, the A is on top and the B is on the bottom. You can see I made my text green. I got my, the name of my channel versus the frequency, so I can change my channels here. There's my disconnects channel two, my Utah statewide is channel three, back to parrot, okay? So <clears throat> now let's find out if this works, okay? So I'm keeping an eye on the hotspot. You, we, we should see, I'm going to try to hit the parrot and wake this thing up. KC0QVT. KC0QVT. Okay. Now, <laughs> that is a relief. Turn it down a little bit. Okay. No problem. I'll just keep it away from my mic here on my lapel. My lapel mic. Okay, so that is a good sign. The repeater, I'm sorry, the hotspot heard my... Uh, my voice, the parrot came back. Now let's try and see if anybody's in Utah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change a channel. Whoops. Okay. KC zero QVT monitoring Utah statewide. Anybody copy for radio check? Over. You can see here. I'm listening now. If you look at my, um, oh, somebody's already. This is K one ERO over. Uh, K-A-1-A-E-R-L. Hey, this is Ron, KC0QVT. Thank you for the comeback. How you doing, my friend? And you can... Oh, good, Ron. Uh, the subject is echo radio. You probably just didn't understand me. My New England accent here in the voice then, over. Huh. And copy that. Are, are you actually in Utah right now, or are you in Boston? I'm actually in Rhode Island. I knew any tone uh, uh, 878 UV2. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm talking on one as well. Well, hey, thanks for the comeback. That's great. I'm glad to hear you. Yeah, I see a lot of activity on Utah statewide. It seems like it's a real big active group and thought I'd just jump in, make a QSO, and, and yeah, get somebody from Rhode Island. That's great. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, my, uh, my name's Ron, KC0QVT. I'm in Smithville, Missouri, and uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, this is great. Um, yeah, loving this uh, DMR stuff. Over. <laughs> okay, Ron, well, very good. Yeah, I, I'm watching your video, and I thought I'd be there, because I, I didn't hear anybody on this frequency and one of them. Make sure you knew it was working. So 73 for now, this is KA1ERL. Hey, thanks for the comeback. I appreciate it. It's KC0QVT. I'm clear. All right. Well, uh, as I stayed here, uh, from this point on, the journey begins for you guys. Uh, talk, add talk groups, add channels, pre-built contact lists, get a pre-built code plug, build your own. I uh, invite you to join our official Facebook group page. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're here for you if you need us, 816-532-8451. But I'm, I'm really glad you spent, you know, 50 minutes with me this morning because I really think this is important. I've, I've just seen a lot of folks just struggling in this, and, and I just want to make sure you just have a great attitude. Uh, you know, get your license. Get good radio ID.net. Get a good radio. It's definitely good to have a good radio. No, you know, we, we offer them here. We want to help you and get a good hotspot and or uh, be in proximity to a repeater. And with that, I will uh, let you guys go. Um, give us a call if you need some support. We definitely are here for you. Uh, anyway, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook group page. Got the uh, Grand Ham giveaway coming up, 7-3.